Now we got to get to Washington. Washington. I love my Washington Huskies. Can I say my Washington Huskies? They're my proxy team. They're my proxy. They're like my second favorite team in this whole season. This this season, at least. I love Washington. I love me some Kalen DeBoer. Love me some Michael Penix. And my first takeaway from this win that they gutted out, by the way, against Utah is don't overlook Washington's toughness. Everyone likes to look at the shiny object, right? We've talked about it on the channel before. We see the shiny metal object and we're like a bunch of like flies or mosquitoes swarming around, you know, the, the, the shiny, the, the lamp that, what is it, like, the, the buzzes the mosquitoes, right? Well, that's the trap you could fall in. Don't think that Washington is just offense. Don't think that that's the only part of their game that makes them good. That was a gutty, gritty, tough victory they got against Utah. They ran the ball decently well, and of course they threw the ball well. By the way, Romo Dunze, I'm going to say it right here, and I'm going to piss off an entire fan base, but let's be honest. You all notice the hat, right? You notice the hat. This is a fan base that I love to piss off anyway. If Marvin Harrison Jr. belongs in the Heisman race, if he belongs in the Heisman ceremony, so does Roma Dunze. Call me crazy, but I shared it on Twitter a little while ago. By the way, you can follow me on X or Twitter, whatever the fuck Elon Musk is calling his, his play thing these days, his play project. Roma Dunze and Marvin Harrison have very comparable stats. And I know stats isn't what it's all about. And Heisman, the Heisman candidacy, the Heisman thing is a, is, is a popularity contest, right? And every year we see a player go to the ceremony who didn't necessarily have the stats, but had the panache, had the fan base behind them and played for a big program. My Michigan Wolverine said Aiden Hutchinson just a couple of years ago. And I'm going to tell you guys right now, I don't think Aiden Hutchinson should have finished number two in the Heisman race, but that's how this thing works, right? So I get that that's why you want Marvin Harrison Jr. there, because he plays for a big program. He's had big moments. He's got great stats and he's a great player. Marvin Harrison Jr. probably is the best player in college football. Roma Dunze might be number two or three. Three receptions this past week, just three, went for 111 yards and two touchdowns. And what did he do this past weekend? He got the game breaking, took the lead late touchdown against a top 25 Utah team. To me, that is the textbook definition of a Heisman moment. What did he do against Oregon? Game winning touchdown. What does he do every week? Big moments, big opportunities, he makes plays, he wins games. And a lot of you out there have said, well, Adunze is just another wide receiver in Washington's wide receiver core. They got amazing wide receivers everywhere. Isn't, isn't that what you also say about your Ohio State team, Buckeye fans? Marvin Harrison is a great wide receiver, but you've also got a Mecca Buka. You got Cade Stover at tight end. You've got Carnell Tate. You've got these five stars that just roll in every single season. You can't tell me for two seconds that if Marvin Harrison Jr. was out for a game, that you would just suddenly become Iowa on offense. You would take a big hit, but you've also got great wide receivers too. So this argument that Adunze just takes advantage of a system, Ryan Day's system is really great over here too and doesn't necessarily need Marvin on the field to win. Adunze is just as great of a wide receiver, in my opinion, statistically and in big moments. Is he a better player overall? Probably not. Is he really a better wide receiver? Probably not. I'll concede that. But if we're going to be honest, if we really want to treat the Heisman like it's the award that it should be, that it's the award for the best player in the country, you need to consider one of the best wide receivers in the country. The wide receiver position is one of the most important positions on the field. It just is. Washington, of course, has two more tests to end out the season, and they got to play Oregon State on the road this weekend. Of course, Michael Penix remains the number one passer in the nation. Washington is number eight. I almost said number one. They're not. They're number eight in the country in first down offense, by the way, and they are 18th in third down percentage. The one bad thing going against Washington is they are 99th in the country in rushing offense, and that actually kind of surprised me because they gutted out a win against Washington. They gutted out a win against Utah this previous week, running the ball a little bit. 
when they had to, but still 99th overall. That is a bit of a concern against an Oregon State team that don't look now has a great offensive line and a great defensive line, great defensive front. The front seven for Oregon State is pretty good, and they are 16th in the country overall in rushing defense. However, they're 32nd in the country in total defense as well as scoring defense, and this is where I think the big difference is made in this game. Oregon State is 73rd overall in overall pass defense. So I think this could be a really big game for Michael Penix. I think this could be potentially a really big game, another big game, and another big moment for Roma Dunze. Speaking of Roma Dunze, he just makes big plays and big moments and wins games. I think Oregon State kind of wants to do to Washington in this game what, of course, Michigan did to Ohio State in 2021. It's going to be at home at Riser Stadium. The Beaver Pond or whatever you call it out there, the Beaver Hut, I don't know. I, I, I'm not that familiar with Oregon State football. I apologize. It's going to be rocking, I'm sure. Can't remember if this is a night game or not. But the only thing that's going to slow Washington down is a competent pass defense because... And Michael Penix is just going to light you up if you're not solid on the back end. And maybe Oregon State can figure out some things up front to get pressure on him. I think Washington will be able to run the ball just enough to get the yardage that they need to keep that a threat, to keep those safeties back, or to, to, to cheat those safeties up a little bit. But I don't know if it, I don't know if it matters because 73rd overall in the country in pass defense, especially when you haven't faced the most prolific passing offenses in the Pac-12 yet this season. What is Oregon State's biggest win against Utah? They're not exactly prolific through the air. They've faced UCLA. I don't think they've faced Oregon yet. They faced USC, I believe, so that's one thing. But 73rd in the country overall in passing yards per game, and they're outside of the top 40 in first down defense, meaning they give up a lot of yards on first down. Or Washington should be able to stay on schedule with their short passing game and make big plays with their long passing game. I think Washington wins this game by a couple touchdowns, not going to lie. Don't have any like score predictions on that one this week. Maybe I'll come up with one and make a short for it, but yeah, I don't know. That's what I got for Washington, Oregon, though. Washington, Oregon State, Washington, Oregon. That's, that's in a couple of weeks. Washington, Oregon rematch, Pac-12 title. That'll be fun.